decided to apply for Drag Race UK to make shit tons of money. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm in awe. <laughs> Teach me, how do you do that? I don't know. I spent six months teaching myself locked in a room. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, you see what you like. DDC, keep it tight. You know I'm rocking it right. T -t 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 True. I came to love, not to fight. But the gloves are off. It's time to say good night, good night, good night. You clearly don't value what I do as a drag queen, and that is also fine. I'll be 100% honest with you. Now that I've seen you here, you are 20 times the drag queen you are in the outside world. Because for the past 10 years, I've seen Davina in a red wig and a silver dress. Bullshit, Vivian. And I know exactly. Bullshit. But I've, I've Bullshit. seen... Bullshit. Tell me anybody else in this workroom who has a four and a half octave range. Tell me anybody else who can sing in five languages. Tell me anybody else who can do that all while doing the splits. Tell me anybody else who has 15 years of experience of directing production. <laughs> It's time for a little bit of social distancing with father and son, and we're joined by the incredible Davina De Campo. <laughs> oh, 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 it should say, it should say big fanny, but I cut, I ran out of letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a serious interview, no? Yeah, yeah. Safety talk. No, well. Unfortunately, um, he's already asked me a very light question and I turned it into a very deep political speech, unfortunately. <laughs> God, all, of, all of mine are deep and political. <laughs> so anyway, my first question is, when, what is the exact date to the minute when this lockdown will end? Because if anyone <laughs> else asks that question, I'm going to scream. Anyway, sorry, go on, Jen. Um, so, Davina, it's father and son you're chatting to, obviously. You, you must be like, these people just must keep Zooming you and you don't know who they are. But, but that, <laughs> that's who it is. Um, we'll start off with Drag Race UK. Um, were you nervous? Were you excited? Were you anxious? Or were you all of the above? Um, all of the above, uh, including terrified. Yeah. Why? Fully terrified. Because it was... You you have been doing this for a long time. You are known for red wig, silver dress. Um, and it was, you know, you have all, already had a lot of support. So so where was that fear from? Um, partly because of that, I think. You know, when you have worked for such a long time and you've had a moderate amount of success already, um, there, is, there is a different level of pressure I think mm. on you and yeah. I I already put a lot of pressure on myself to try and be the best that I can and um I'm I hate mistakes um you know that makes yeah. me really annoyed um and I also um because it was the first series, I really felt the pressure of that, that this was the first time the whole world was going to see what UK drag was about and what we had to give. Um, and, and so, I, you know, I really felt that. I felt mm -hmm. that we had a responsibility to everybody else in the drag community in the UK to do our very best to show that we have a lot to offer. You know, because the American seasons have been running for 11 series by that point, and then All Stars on top of that. So, that, you know, there isn't that same level of um, pressure on them to make it a success. It's already a, a monolithic, gigantic machine that, you know, of course people are going to tune in and watch. We needed to make sure that we served up the goods so that people would feel 
uh, inclined mm. to do the same here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was an amazing show, amazing. And I know what my absolute favourite moment was. Well, uh, two absolute favourite moments. But what, what uh, before I say mine, what, what was your favourite, favourite moment? Um, I mean, there's a few which I really enjoyed. Um, my favourite bit, because I'm a bit of a salty cow, um, was... Oh, let it never be I know. <laughs> salty bitch. Um, no. One of my favourite bits was uh, the advert challenge, because literally what you yeah. saw on screen was what happened in the room. They were all like, she has lost her mind what is she doing <laughs> none of this makes any sense brilliant brilliant she though. is completely bonkers um, <laughs> and then in the morning they all said the same thing they were all like you know i think you're in trouble um you didn't make none of it made it and i was no. just like well yeah we shall see we I shall could, see you know because I could, i've done yeah I well i didn't i've different. already done lots of kind of editing and you know yeah, filming yeah. you don't film start to finish do you it's like no, you do bit bit Some, like. yeah sometimes you do the end bit before you do the oh, beginning you do, bit, or you do the middle yeah. you know it's just all over the place and yeah all you can do as the kind of director producer mm. is hand your storyboard to the editor and pray that or they, they follow what right. you've asked them yeah. to do exactly Absolutely. which they did yeah. you know yeah. they did exactly what i'd asked them um, so i felt kind of like okay about that um <laughs> and then of course because <laughs> i'm a salty bitch um and that then... plastic is choking our seas and killing mermaids like me available nationwide now tdc fully endorses tdc always read the label keep away from children and salty bitches make us feelings of moral superiority incurable realness and severe shade <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> and then um the frock destroyers um was also like a a real it was just a great experience brilliant um i never worked with bagger before properly you know like we'd done um prides and stuff like that and been in the same area as each other but never on the same stage at the same time with each other um so it was really really good to see her work um and she has an amazing voice like her voice is brilliant she's got such a fantastic high range um and and then uh blue was so nervous before she started and really delivered you know yeah. she really delivered she did, what what was asked through. of her yeah and it, i think for her she was shocked that she'd managed to do such a good job of it yeah um whereas you know she didn't realize until actually hearing it back oh actually this sounds good I, I sound yeah. Okay. yeah exactly whereas yeah. in the room i was like oh you sound really good doing this yeah actually. yeah yeah um oh sorry just a minute just, i think a red wig and a silver dress <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite bit was <laughs> i'm not bringing the mood down but my favorite bit was your belief is a belief my existence is a reality Top tip. Well, it's a fact, isn't it? That Absolutely. is a simple fact. I jumped up and I cheered and I was screaming in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And it, yeah. it's, you know, it's one of those things which, because I've been talking about this stuff for such a long time. Yeah. Um, when, when we were talking about it in the room, those parts just kind of fell into place for me. And I was like, well, yeah. Fine, you can believe whatever you want, but I am actually here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you're, you're I am a, here already. Yeah, mm. hmm? it's been really nice as well. And what seems to have flourished is your relationship with Blue as well. That's been really nice to see. Yeah, I honestly, I, I adore everybody off that show. They are all really, really lovely people. Um, but I have a, a very special place in my heart for blue oh. um because well uh you know i i know that my makeup is not um as refined and developed as other people's because that's not my shtick that isn't my usp you know what what my thing is is what i'm doing on stage and about making people feel like we're having a good time with each other you know yeah um so 
that's always been where my focus has been. This has always been secondary. Like I talked about it the other week, like it's a, a present and this is just the wrapping paper and the gift is actually what you're getting on stage, you know? I wish my Christmas presents looked like that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want it in your house though. <laughs> No, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it in my house. That's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's like most things you get at Christmas. All right, for an hour, any more than that, in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. You, you, you get a big handful, you pull it and expect a big bang and it's nothing. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I, so, um, moving on, uh, you, you've been performing live for, for so long, um, and we've already touched on the old thing, but we've got someone older with us now, so that's different. I know. Um, but <laughs> whippersnappers now. <laughs> Just a minute. Hey, will you sod off, you old git? Right. <laughs> um, you been, like I said, you've been performing for, for so long. Has the reaction to you changed? Because, I mean, Drag Race has got such a massive cult following, but, but now bigger than ever. Um, especially now in the UK, has your reaction uh, when you do live performances with yourself or with, with the Frock Destroyers, has that kind of blown up? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it, it'd be stupid to say, no, no, it's exactly the same as it ever was. Um, because, you know, sometimes I was performing at four o'clock in the morning to six people. <laughs> now, uh, it's not quite the same kettle of fish. Um, I've been super, super lucky that um, nearly all of the projects that I've been involved with since Drag Race have been sellouts. Um, and uh, people have been incredibly warm with me. You know, it, I've... It, the uh, fandom occasionally can be really toxic. You know, some of the season 12 mm. girls are really going through it at the moment. Um, mm. And uh, I am so lucky that I have experienced almost none of that. You know, I've had maybe three, four messages. So, yes, it's amazing on stage. Um, and what's, what's interesting is um, people... I think expect me to be really political when I'm doing a show, you know, because I talked about politics and I talked about um, yeah. gender and all of that stuff quite a lot on the show. Um, and, and so people feel like, Oh, it's going to be about that. Mm. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, if I'm just coming to do a show at a, a nightclub, I, I'm not entirely certain that that's the right forum for <laughs> a, a show about politics and, you know, mm -hmm. social responsibility, you know, all of that stuff. Um, so while I may drop elements of that in, um, most of it is about having a good time and, and having fun. And so <laughs> some of the comments that I've had from audiences have been, I didn't expect you to be funny. <laughs> 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 Have you ever thought about taking antipsychotics? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't expect it either, but sometimes it happens. <laughs> <laughs> On very rare occasions. So after after Drag Race, then you kind of got on. Um, a locomotion that was going at 300 miles an hour. Uh, you've had so many projects, as you say, they've all been sellout because I know we've been, we've been following and I know we tweet occasionally. Um, but um, because of the lockdown now, of course, everything's had to stop and we're doing, we're all doing this now with zoom, zoom facing and all sorts of other instant, whatever ink. Um, how are you gonna? How are you gonna pr prioritize what you do first when you come out of lockdown? Um, well, I've got a tour um, booked in for um, August time, so fingers crossed that will go ahead. Um, and that, of course, then dictates what I'll be doing in exactly. the couple of months yeah. previous to that. Um, mm -hmm. because I'll be writing it and filming little snippets and bits and pieces for that. 
Um, and so, you know, what I'm planning to do is, um, you know, cherry and ginger that I yeah, used yeah, to work yeah. with all the time in Manchester. So like we're as close as I've ever been to having a drag family, that's, that's them. Um, so we've got a, a few little bits and pieces in the works. So as soon as we're allowed, then we'll be getting on with some of the stuff that we've got planned for that. Um, and um, what, what would I prioritise doing? See, I've spent so much time relaxing, mm-hmm. uh, which has just been really nice. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I'm going to prioritise, really. Mm-hmm. I'm always very much about, is it, is it going to help me pay the bills? Is it something I'm interested in? And uh, is it something which um, will help me progress, you know? Okay. And if it's, if it's not one of those things, then that's generally how I prioritise things anyway, you know? Okay. Can, it, can it help me pay the bills first? <laughs> <laughs> quite right she's got to eat <laughs> talking of lockdown what have been your highs and lows of lockdown oh um not still at of highs no um <laughs> well i i've done a couple of shows at home with divina de covid um and <laughs> <laughs> um, that's been really good fun um, and I, it's given me a bit of time to spend uh, working on makeup and um, styling wigs and doing stuff like that um, which I'm really enjoying uh, doing that because it, once, you know, once you sort of set off on the train it's very difficult to find any yeah, yeah. time to do any of those Absolutely. things anymore um, and that's always been something which I've really enjoyed about drag is, you know, having some nothing at the beginning. And then, you know, in two days, finally you have something that, mm-hmm. you know, wasn't there to begin with. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I've really enjoyed that. That's, be, but the, the show was really good fun. Um, I got to interact with lots of people and, um, and we did it like a jukebox. So I just had one to 20, and they just had to choose a number, you know, so we're typing the, the number that they want. Um, so that's been really good fun. The lows, I would say, um, uh, I don't know that I've had a particularly terrible low so far. <laughs> I mean, my husband and I are getting along all right. Um, <laughs> that's the main thing. <laughs> I mean, I've locked him outside on the balcony for five weeks, so that might be why we're getting along so well. But um, <laughs> no, I mean, probably not being able to see people in the same way, you know, that's been, that's yeah. difficult. Um, and, um, but I, I, like I said at, at the beginning, I'm quite happy to be by myself. Yeah. Me, no, I think me too. <laughs> Some people can, some people can do, do, deal with it. And, and I've always been quite good at that. I, did, I, I didn't know what all the fuss was about. I did have a day last week where I was like, oh, actually, I, you know, I'm missing people. I'm missing that because I'm quite a tactile person. We all are. We all hug, you know, each other and, and all that. So yes. I, think, I think that is the, the most difficult part. But I've not, you know, I haven't, apart from the anxiety going to a shop or something like that, which is what I was talking about before, it's like... Going, mm. going somewhere and then and then you just you know just to a normal shop and thinking you know you start to breathe heavily and and you know or, or get a little bit anxious about going in and, and actually being mm. near which is again is not me at all but it's just that's a bizarre feeling uh, do, do you not yeah. think that I, I for me I've got I've a bad neck because when you're in the shop and anybody coughs and everybody shoots their head round like yeah. that <laughs> It's awful. <laughs> Your wig would fly off, wasn't it? <laughs> it's hot. Somebody coughs and everybody goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a mean. That's a mean way. Mm-hmm. Right, Davina. Um, go on. I think my dad's got one more question. Of you. Well, no, you pinch my oh. question. Sorry. 
so you're not sticking to the script. So if oh, could, well, there's, we... pro, there's professionals, Davina, and there's professionals. I know. Anyway, I'll ask, I I'll ask James this question. Oh, you've gone on half screen now. Oh God, I'm move at, back oh. quick because that bloody are. shelf needs right. dusting behind you. <laughs> anyway. <It does. laughs> I know I can see it from here. If you could play any part in a music, dirty bitch. If you could play any part in a musical, <laughs> what would it be? And not the helicopter in Miss Saigon. Damn it! Oh. I want, I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. I don't know what would it be if I could play any part in any musical. You know what it would be? It would be um, maybe it would be in the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Because uh, the witches are both men, aren't they? It's mm -hmm. in the original cast recording. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Both men. So I would I would be the Wicked Witch in the Wizard of Oz because oh. as a as a three to four year old, she was my hero. Like she. Yeah, yeah. I, Adore Judy Garland, but the Wicked Witch because she was just so so perfect at it. Um, I, I would, you know, she was a massive hero of mine. When we were playing dress up, I was always the Wicked Witch, always, always, always. Um, so that would that would be my that would be. My and what favorite. about Mary Sunshine? Have you thought about playing that? Uh, Mary Sunshine. Yes. Yeah, I'd look. <laughs> <laughs> I just think she's a bit weak, though, you know, as a character. Oh, but I know you she's wouldn't like, be. That. You would bring it. No. You would bring it. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I know that is, you know, how she's supposed to be. And she is a, a joke within the show. Yeah. Um, but, I, yeah, she'd be a good, a good part. Or um, Loco Chanel in Jamie. Yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. Great part. Get paid to do five minutes on stage. <laughs> That's oh, what I like. They're the part. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to do all the work every day. Just yeah. a little bit, and then I can leave. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, that's what your husband texted me before. But ah! won't go into that. <laughs> Stop it. Right. We'll round this up to, uh, to finally just ask. Um, what are your digital performances and what have you got that you're flogging at the moment? Um, so, all my merch and everything else is on my website. That's all still for sale. Um, and uh, we are in, in the final flourishes of sorting out a UK distributor for that because it's all based in LA because my management is in LA. Um, so, all of my merch is also sent out from there. So, we're just trying to sort out a UK supply for that because it's, you know, especially now it's really difficult um, getting a, anything shipped anywhere. Um, yeah. And all my digital performances will be advertised on my social media. So you can follow me. I'm the same on everything. Divina De Campo, D-I-V-I-N-A, De Campo. Um, <laughs> that's the easiest way to remember how to spell my name. Two I's and one A. Um, and uh, yeah, just it's all on there, easy to find. Um, so come and join. Fabulous. Thank you so much for. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, my love. Take care. And see you soon. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. Huge thanks to Davina De Campo and join us next Friday, the 1st of May at 9 pm here on the Father and Son Facebook page when we have a little bit of social distancing with Corrie's Sally Carmen. See you then, but for now, a little bit of music from Davina De Campo and the Frock Destroyers. Enjoy! Tonight the world says hello and goodbye to Bag of Chips, Blue Hydrangea, and Davina De Campo. This is the Frock Destroyers. We're the fuck destroyers. Bag of 
chips is stunning. Bag of chips is class. Bag of chips is sexy. She takes it up the ooh. Bag of chips is burning. The lady's not for turning. So come take out your sweater. Cause that is much better, 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 better.